it's a Roman road, isn't it? Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Out in Surrey, deepest Surrey yet again. I'm in the village of Ockley. For a little walk around, village of Ockley. And then I'm gonna see a couple of churches we have been to before. In January 2020, we went to these churches before, but hopefully they'll be open this time. Um, and I'm walking on a little bit of uh, Stain Street, the old Roman road that goes all the way down through the A29, down through Ockley. But yeah. Join me for the adventure. You don't come across abandoned uh, buildings very often in this in Surrey. Was you boarded up and signs saying "keep out"? But these must be old uh, farmhouses or farm sheds. Yeah, just having a quick look. So just coming back up to the Roman road, it must go through the uh, Bucking Hill Farm and then carrying all the way down to near where I am, actually, all the way from London. The old Stain Street, Roman Road, London to Chichester. Rome is lying out the infrastructure of our roads. Right, now we're gonna head down into the village of Ockley. So here we are in Ockley, along the A29, the old Roman roads, Stain Street. Driven through here many times, nice few pubs uh, along here, some great old houses. It's a real beautiful spot, but I've never actually stopped here. We're just at the lower scarp of uh, Leith Hill and Leith Hill Tower, which is the highest point in southern England. Uh, because the tower's there, that makes it the highest point. Just by the old well as well, as well. That's yeah, nice. The old cricket pavilion down there. I don't think we were walking down that far. Um, it's lovely. A lovely, lovely day. I've got a pub lunch later on in Newdigate. We'll be going back to the church there as well. Yes, rather delightful. Now I've heard this name mentioned before and on the well here, Jane Scott was a remarkable benefactor to Ockley Village, born in 1799. Uh, governess at Eldershire for 20 years. Died from consumption March the 9th, 1808. Wow. Lovely. I love this though, look. We apologise for this notice, but our Pim pump and building are not used as climbing frames. Of course not. 
Oh, it's a bit windy here, but that's good because it cools us off a little bit. Ockley's had a number of famous residents over the years. Uh, Molly Sugden and her husband lived here. From Are You Being Served, for those who remember. remember. And the husband who's in Sorry, Language Timothy, with Ronnie Corbett. Um, and the Cricketer's Arms down the road was uh, owned by uh, Oliver Reed because he lived here for a time. He, yeah, he's landlord of the, of the Cricketer's Arms. And then moved to a farm nearby that, Peter, uh, that Jim Davidson later lived in. Um, but yeah, yeah, a few people have, have lived here over the years. Another reason Ockley is quite well known from a historical point of view, it's one of the alleged sites of this great Anglo-Saxon battle between the West Saxons and the Danes. It's debatable where this battle was. It was first mentioned in the um, Anglo-Saxon Chronicles in 851 of this great battle where King Ethelwulf and his West Saxon army came west to be beat off the Danes. Ac if, well, in the modern pronunciation from the old Anglo-Saxon is Oak Lee. Oak as in O-A-K and Lee, L-E-A, Oak Lee. There's other places that also say that's where the battle was. There's a place in Basingstoke. There's a hill uh, near Merstham, which we've done many videos from, uh, on the North Downs Way. So no one knows for sure where it is. But during that battle, it's one of the, the final defeats of the, of the Danes. They were utterly wiped out. There wasn't enough people left alive to bury their dead, so they say. And it knocked back the invasion about 14 years. So yeah, it could have been here. No one knows for sure. It's pretty much impossible to find out, but it's, it's a fascinating tale. Fascinating tale. The bloodshed that must have gone on that day. Right. But yeah. The Battle of Ockley. So what we're going to do now head over to St Margaret's Church we have been to before um, but hopefully it might be open I know a little bit more about it this time so let's go We noticed these when we were here before, these etchings into the stonework. Uh, William Butler, Send from Send, 1700, ES 1700. They could be the original stonemasons, just putting their signature into, um, into the stone. It goes all the way up, all the way up. There's loads here. Send, yeah. Isn't that amazing? Is that graffiti? There's some here actually as well. It's all 1700. And the church was being renovated. Graffiti, disgraceful. The church was first mentioned in 1291, but most of it is 1300s, with obviously additions later on, especially 1700s with the graffiti. No, the signature is a better word, the signatures of the stonemasons. That's quite rare. Does anyone know any other churches where that, where that occurs? Yeah, I was right. The tower was rebuilt in the 1700s. And the bells here were forged at the famous Whitechapel foundry. Now, this is quite interesting, especially from American viewers. I'm recording this on the 4th of July, Independence Day. Happy Independence Day, ex-colonists. No, I hope you're having a great day. And the bell in this very church, in this very church, was the template for the Liberty Bell. Can you believe that? For the Liberty Bell. The template for that bell comes from this church here. The reason for that is in 1639, the Reverend Henry Whithill, I think it's called Whitehill or Whithill, um, took a bunch of Puritans across the Atlantic uh, to the New World. Obviously took the ideas for the bells with him. So yeah, one of your uh, original settlers comes from this very parish. I love this, I saw this last time as well, a little family plot. And fenced off little little part of the uh, churchyard. Lovely.
there's a meeting going on in the church so I'm not going to go in because they're all talking and nattering away so that's fine it's a shame really I, I'm a bit selfish when I'm going into a church I'd rather, rather be on my own so I can film comfortably and talk to camera and all, all the usual stuff but they're in there having a meeting all very nice um, but I don't want to disturb them so I've not gone in so yeah but a lovely church I love its connection to America as a lot of these little hamlets did you know the Puritan was it William Mullins I think it was in Dorking who led a lot of Puritans to uh, the New World also there's a plaque a uh, blue plaque in West Street I think it is um, yeah, so what we're going to do now on this little mini adventure is head over to Newdigate again and uh, look at St Peter's Church there, pub lunch at the Six Bells, which I'm looking forward to. A lovely day today. Um, yeah, let's go. So welcome to Newdigate. This would have been a vast forest between the North and South Downs a few thousand years back. This lovely church is extraordinary. It's this wooden tower, one of the finest oak towers in the country. tower was built in 1525 and it really is incredible it just sticks out something completely different in a church you know do apologize if you hear planes going we're not far from Gatwick airport so uh, yeah it's lovely lovely around here straight down there you go down to the South Downs up that way we're in the North Downs Well, that's a 12th century church. There's lots of additions later on, like many of these churches are. I wonder if it's open, if we have a look. Fantastic. I forgot what they're actually called the actual ropes. I'm calling them ropes. I think they actually had to have a name. Excuse my ignorance. We're under the wooden tower, the oak tower. It's brilliant. When we were here last, back in January 2020, it was a really cold day. It's January, isn't it? Um, but it's, today is lovely because uh, it's summer. Yeah, amazing. Absolutely amazing. Nice vibe in this church. Really nice vibe. What's nice about this church is when you walk in, the lights automatically come on. So there might be a sensor somewhere, which is great. Because in some of the churches recently, as you may have seen, I'm struggling to find lights because I'm pathetic. I'm loving the uh, weeping angels. This parish church of St. Peter was restored and the North Isle added AD 1877. Lovely organ. I was always privileged that time when I went to the church at Kingswood in Surrey along the A217 and the organist was there at the same time. He let me in and play the organ for me. It was a real, real privilege. That was great. Totally off the, off the cuff. I was like, oh, thank you very much, you know. Ladies and gentlemen, please subscribe to my YouTube channel.
There's apparently a 13th century church chest somewhere. I don't know where it is. I've been looking around for it. Can't see it. Those would have been chests that would hold the parish records that came in, by, I think, by law around sort of the fifth, mid 1500s. So birth, deaths, that kind of thing, you know. There are six bells here, hence the name of the pub, the six bells. Clues in the title. I wonder where that chest is. I would like to have seen that. 13th century. This lovely screen here. I think this is quite uh, not that long, uh, long ago. Very nice. Oh, it's a very nice drinking game, if you remember from the uh, previous video. Chest, found it. There it is, 13th century chest. Isn't that amazing. 13th century. I love this church. Absolutely love it. There's people in the uh, in the grounds. I'm gonna have a look around the churchyard in a second before we have lunch at the Six Bells across the road, which I have been to before. It's very nice. It's really weird. Sometimes you're out in your own county and you come to places like well, you've been here before, but you come to places. It seems like you could be a million miles away. You know, I could be in the West Country for all I know, but no, we're in Surrey near Gatwick Airport, not far from Dorking actually. I must do a video from Dorking. Everyone says, why do you Dorking? Yeah, I might do it. It's just um, too many people maybe, I don't know. Maybe do it on the GoPro, make it a little bit less conspicuous. But uh, yeah, it's lovely. Let's go and have a look around into the churchyard. I'm not going to leave without touching an old door. It's got to be done, isn't it? It's part of a ritual. Touch the old door and say very nice for the drinking game. friend Richard Vobes visited here we did notice this, this on our visit there seem to be quite a few yew trees in the churchyard you know you usually get one maybe two I see about three or four yew trees very interesting so it means probably that they're much older than the church itself and it could have been a meeting place or a sacred space to put the dowsing rods see if there's any earth energy currents going through which I'm sure there are still like to get to the bottom of that why are ancient sites built where they are yeah. You know, think about modern planning. You know, the pl a planning councillor, Helen, friends of mine who are planning, uh, planning town planners, got to look at the logistics of why you want to build something where it is. So it's very interesting. As I say, I think the ancients were much more in tune with the natural earth energies. Um, Oh, these are lovely. These are the compost enclosure where the more natural burials. Isn't that lovely? Really being one with nature, so to speak. That's really nice. So there you have it. Ockley and Newdigate. Just a little adventure. Nothing too grand. Seen some few historical sites. And we're now going to go over to the Six Bells pub for lunch. Any time we eat early, we'll have a pub lunch <laughs> and uh, we'll see you inside.
Well, that was a lovely meal in the Six Bells pub. I had sirloin steak. It was absolutely delicious. And an excellent playlist as well. They had music playing in the background. And on came I Am The Resurrection by The Stone Roses in a country pub. I was like, yeah, bring it on. You know, big Stone Roses fan. It's not where you're from, it's where you're at. Um, yeah, and they had the Water Boys. And they had Come On Eileen. Mm. Um, it's really good. It's interesting with the Water Boys, um, um, The Hole of the Moon. The problem with that song now, every time I hear it, I just think of Graham Norton on the Father Ted episode. The whole of them. Do you remember that? It's just, I, it sort of ruined the song for me a little bit because that scene, just, Graham Norton just jumps out at me. Um, but anyway, that's it. Hope you've enjoyed the little video from Ockley and Nudigate. And uh, please do the old like, subscribe, all the normal stuff. I'm very much appreciated. And we'll see you next time. Take care. Whoa.